Hi everybody, welcome back to Fiddle Quick Fiddle Lessons. Today I have a bluegrass tune for you called Crawdad, or the Crawdad Song. If you enjoy this video, please like and subscribe, and if you'd like to keep these videos coming, please consider supporting me on Patreon. The melody of the tune goes like... <laughs> down into chunks and learn it. I'm doing this in the key of D, which means you have two sharps, so your scale is and we aren't going up on the E string for this, but we are on the G string. So let's go back down and play the notes on the G string. So that's C sharp. So you're going to stretch your third finger up. B, A, down to G. Back up. And there you have a halfway extended scale that'll cover all the notes that you're going to use in this tune. Most important thing, you're doing this on the A string and the D string and changing that third finger to sharp on the G string. All right, so the rhythm to this will vary depending on what words are being sung or what words you have in your head. I'm going to keep it easy and just do a basic shuffle pattern, one and a two and a on most of the notes. So it starts out. <laughs> started on the D string, up to F sharp, back to D, down to B, down to A, back to B, back to D. So stop a minute, practice that. Notice how I'm accenting the and, one and a two. that by giving a little lean into the bow. So I'm just doing a little twist of my forearm. You can see it there in the corner. It's like a twist that you get when you're opening a doorknob. So lean that into the string. I know it looks like I'm pressing down, but I'm really not. I'm just giving a little lean. So I've got and then lean, lean, and I'm leaning before the bow stroke. Second part starts on an F-sharp. So it's F-sharp, A, up to B, down to A, down to F-sharp, back to A, down to E. Here's the next part. So that's kind of a long one. I'm going to break it up into two halves. So it starts on F sharp, up to A, up to B, back down to A, F sharp, and then D. So here it is again. this on, starting on D, 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 F sharp, D, D, A, do that again, D, 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 F sharp, D, D, A, and then let's put that together, because that's a longer, there's a lot more notes in that phrase than there were in the first two. So back to F sharp. F sharp, A, up to B, A, F sharp, D, 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 F sharp, D, D, A. So stop 
to work with that for a minute and then we'll go on. The last part is syncopated. So we have one and two and three and four and one. One and two, three and one. Let's play this together a couple of times. Two. Here we go. When you are playing that in a bluegrass jam, the, there will be a singer singing that melody. It's good to be familiar with it, but what you're going to be doing most likely is playing backup or taking a break. So in order to prepare yourself for doing both of those, first thing you really want to do is get familiar with the chord progression. One way to do that is to just play the root of each note as the chord goes by. This tune has a lot of one chord for a while and then they start to change real quickly and you can kind of be lulled into complacency and then suddenly there's all these changes. Let's go through the chords with the backing track. I'll do it three times give you a chance to catch on. Here we go. Two. Starts with D. Three. was playing on the second and the fourth beat of every measure, the chuck of the guitar's boom chuck. And that is kind of the most basic form of comping would be to do that. So the next step would be to learn all of the possible double stops for each chord. One way of doing that is to play the arpeggios, so your D arpeggio, starting on the lowest note, which it would be A. So it'd be A, D, F sharp, A, D, F sharp, 
and A. So that's not starting on the D of the chord, it's actually starting on the fifth note, but it covers all the possibilities. So then you can start pairing up those notes and coming up with all of the possible double stops. So we'll have A and D, F sharp and A, D and F sharp if I use my fourth finger, open A and open D, F sharp and A, D and F sharp, F sharp and A, D and F sharp, and D and A. Probably won't use that much, but it's a possibility. Your next arpeggio is your A. So your A arpeggio is A, C sharp, and E. So we've got A, C sharp, E, A, C sharp, E, and A. So your combinations there, you can play A and E, C sharp and E, C sharp and A. E and A, C sharp and E, A and C sharp, C sharp and E, A and E, C sharp and A. All right, so your G chord, which is G, B, D, G, B, G, D, G, and B. Double stops there. You have open G, B and D, B and G. If you use your fourth finger, you have D and G. Then you have D and B, G and B, D and G, B and G, D and G. And then D and B. So learn all of those and then when you're playing your backup you can vary the chords that you're doing a little bit and have some more options. Something like this. see there I varied the different double stops that I used and I varied the rhythm a little bit in order to keep things interesting. One way to get yourself ready for taking a bluegrass break on this tune would be to practice the arpeggios as the chord progression goes by. So let me show you what I mean by that. Let's we'll start with the D arpeggio. Two, three, four. Once you get confident with that, you can speed it up and go quarter notes or eighth notes or whatever you like. You can also do the same thing practicing the pentatonic scale going through that. So I'll give you an idea of what I mean by doing that here. D pentatonic or D bluegrass scale.
be tricky to figure out how to link the two, but that's what you're trying to practice, is making a smooth transition from one key to the next. When you're playing back up, you want to make sure that you're not getting in the way of the melody. One way to do that is to make sure that you're staying down low on the bottom two strings because the melody part is likely to be right in the middle. But this song has some places where you could put in a little fill. So I'm going to show you how I might play back up for somebody singing this tune. I'm going to play the melody as if I was a singer. Trust me, you don't want to hear me sing this. <laughs> break and I'll tell you how I came up with some of my ideas. I started out with a quote from the actual song. I added the open A double stop to D chord. That's basically the D pentatonic scale. Up to and then I just played the scale going down from F sharp. And back up again. That's where it's handy to practice that D pentatonic scale starting from every note and doing different patterns too. So that's all I really did was play on that D pentatonic scale. That's all D pentatonic. There, I threw in the flat seven. So throwing in the flat seven is very bluegrassy. You can make a scale. So that's playing the D pentatonic scale and throwing in that flat seven, the C natural. And it gives a very bluegrassy sound. And that's all I did there was, a, was basically a scale. And then I changed chords, it's the A major pentatonic scale. But I really just did a couple of notes from there. And since that's an A chord, doing the open E double stop. So I liked that idea. That used that flat seven. I just did uh, the double stop. And then I copied it on the G string. Little variation on that. Another D, we'll call it the D bluegrass scale with that flat seven in it. And then I just, I just played around with that bluegrass scale. Then on the second variation, I went up to the higher octave and thought, you know, how would that go? And I just uh, kind of played around with that melody. So 
So that's all I'm doing there, same thing. I'm flipping back and forth between my D pentatonic scale, my A pentatonic scale, and my G pentatonic scale. So skipping down to the, to the end. This F natural is both the flat seven of the G pentatonic scale and the flat three of the D pentatonic scale. So it kind of has double, double duty. This last solo that I took, I just drew from the pentatonic scale and played whatever patterns and double stops and things came into my mind. So, there's some ideas for you. Have fun. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.